Good morning. Good morning. It's so wonderful to have you here with us. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. There's so much joy we have from that statement. I just He fills us with his grace and mercy. I'm Pastor Tim. I'm retired. I've been a member here for about three years, and I'll be leading you in worship. Before we begin our service, let's just take a moment and greet the people you are worshiping with here. Please remain standing for our first hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will declare our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left done. We have not loved our neighbor we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, as your brother in Christ, 
have the joy to announce to you the grace of God to each and every one of you and declare that the forgiveness of sins is for each and every one of your sins. And we do this, we say this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with a hymn of praise. Good Christian friends, rejoice and sing. Please be seated. Our epistle lesson is taken from the fourth chapter of St. Paul's epistle to the Philippians, beginning at the fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson is taken from the 15th chapter of the gospel of St. John, beginning at the ninth verse. Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and I remain in his love. I have told you this, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. 
love each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Hey, how you doing? Okay, now, you got to give me a little room here. i got to sit down, okay? <laughs> so, let's... Oh, something stupid. I broke it. Yeah. So, so i got to ask you guys a question here. What makes you guys smile? What, what, what makes you happy? What do you like being to do? Tickled. What's that? Tickled. T- being tickled, okay. Because, because, because and, I and kissing. And kissing, and that makes you happy. To, that, that's really good. Do you like to go to the mountains sometimes? Mm, yeah. Not, no? Not, I think, I don't know. You don't know? Okay, but you like to go to the mountains, huh? Or maybe a swimming pool? I, I went to all those places. Yeah, I, I like them all. Water park. Water park? Where my seven years old I love the water park, baby. That's one of my favorite places. Yeah, the, the, the water it park. It was so cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, it, the water was I cold. To, I went to the toddler slide in the entire amusement park. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Zoom. Boom, and into the water. It, you, it, had a, it, had a, it had a purple and, and green. Okay, slide. purple, yeah. And it had a, like, A big slide and stuff. Like, like two loops. That's cool. Yeah, you know, there's lots of stuff that makes us happy. I want to talk today about a special kind of happiness. It's called joy. And, and joy is a happiness that God gives us way deep down inside of us. We say in our heart, in who, who we are, way deep down there, because we know Jesus. What did Jesus do? Why do we know that, why do we know that he loves us? What did he do for us? Yeah. And... and yeah, but he's still alive. That's right. So Jesus not only died for us, he loved us so much, he's with us every day because he's still alive. alive. That's right. He rose again on, on, on Easter morning. And, and every day God whispers to our hearts that that's all true and that he loves us and he's with us and he wants us to be happy in him, to have this great happiness called joy because Jesus loved us. And then to, to give that away every single day. Uh, there's... Um, there's a song I, I, I want to teach you today, all right? And it's an old song, and it's about that. Why were dinosaurs... Why was... We'll why talk about dinosaurs why another day. That's right, but juice. that's why Jesus but, came, though. Why do we have candles? All right, we're, I'll tell you about candles, but then we're going to sing my song, okay? <laughs> we have candles everywhere because Jesus is the light of the world. And he's the light no darkness can over. No matter how hard things are, even when we're crying, Jesus is there. And his light shines through. That's why we have candles. And at Christmas time, we have lots and lots of candles to remind us of that. All right, can, can we sing my song about joy now? It, it, it goes like this. I'm, I'm going to try to get up, and, and then we'll sing, okay? Yeah, if I fall on you, you have to pick me up, all right? (laughs) All right, here we go. It goes like this. It's real easy. I've got the joy, joy, so smile. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Say that much of me. Ready? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. And then it finishes like this. I've got the joy, joy, joy. You want to smile when you say that. Because it's, bo- it's like a smile deep inside. I've got the joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. I right, do the whole thing. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. I've got the joy, 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 down in my heart, down in my heart. Joy, joy, down in my heart. Down in my heart. Stay. All right, here, here we go. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. There's a second verse. It's real easy. Instead of joy, you say love of Jesus. 
I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus. You got it? All right, let's sing it. Ready? I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. All right, now, we're going to do those two verses in between. I want to sing a little something because it's going to talk about us giving that away. Got to give it away. Here we go. Got the joy, joy. I know it. I know it. Here we go. Here we go. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And it's the greatest, grandest feeling. And it's a feeling here to stay. And it's a joy that needs revealing. So I just want to say, love of Jesus. Ready? Say, I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Would you guys pray after me? Dear Jesus, thank you for your wonderful love and the joy you give me every day. Help me to share that love and joy with others. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, we got children's church out the door, or you can go back to, to your mom and dad, and then we'll get going. What do we got next? Oh, we, I think we got a song. We got a song. Yeah. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm Brad. I'm one of the pastors here. It's, it's great to be with you. Uh, pa Pastor Nathan's at a conference this weekend, so you're stuck with me. Uh, whether you're here in person or whether you're online, we welcome you, and we pray that you're blessed. The uh, Spirit of God's not uh, confined by space and time. So wherever we are, uh, if you're five feet from me, the Spirit's going to touch your heart. Uh, if you're 50 miles from me, your spirit, His Spirit's going to touch your heart, and we pray that you might receive those gifts today. Can we get an amen? Amen. 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 All right, we're going to talk about joy. Joy is, um, the way I define it, is, is kind of a, a happiness of soul. Uh, it, it's it's um, the soul, the heart is, is the, the very essence of our being. Uh, and, and, and really, it, we, we, we know that that's what life's supposed to be. We know when we've lost that joy. The, the, the reason we used uh, this, this picture is you got the black and white there. That's what life is like without joy. Have you guys experienced that in your lives? No, never, right? I know, I never have. I'm the pastor. I've never experienced that in my life, right? Of course we have. And, and life becomes dreary. All it is is a bunch of jobs, one thing after another, uh, uh, tasks to do, uh, uh, meaningless 
Uh, it takes the pizzazz out of life, what life's supposed to be when, when that joy isn't there. And, and we, we know it, we, we, we know it when we see it, and when we're experiencing it, and we know when we don't have it, right? Uh, and it's always about relationship. You never have that joy in a vacuum. Either relationship with God or, or with others. Joy is always about relationship. And it transcends. It, it, it turns a black and white world into color no matter what that world is around you. It, it transcends it. Yeah, I, I'm, some of you have heard, heard me uh, t- talk about this before, but, but when, when Jane and I got married, a lot of things went wrong. We, we were supposed to have the, and we did, we had the wedding reception in her father's backyard. He was in South Dakota, huge backyard, flowers everywhere, looks like a florist, right? Uh, and, and they did a wonderful job, and her aunt, aunt was supposed to make this beautiful um, lavender cake, you know? Um, only the cake turned out green, <laughs> and it rained. I mean, it really rained, you know, and, and all the farmers were saying, don't, don't worry about this young feller. Uh, uh, we needed this rain. And so for our, for, for our, our, our party after the wedding, right, the, the, the reception, we had what we had, wet, uh, green, soggy cake, and everybody got wet. And on top of it, when we got married, my name's Bradley, and, and uh, Jane said, I take thee badly. And we've got it on film, baby. I'm not lying. We've, we've got it on film, right? All this stuff. When I tell this story to young couples who are going to get married, the looks on it, because I try to say, hey, you remember this stuff, you'll laugh. They, they're horrified with all this stuff. Horrified, you know? You think I cared about any of that? You think Jane cared about any of that? Didn't care. Not at all. Why? Because we had that joy of relationship, right? That's what transcends it. That joy of relationship. So I, I, I was thinking about this, and, and uh, you know, the, the theme is it enriches relationships, but I think it goes beyond that. Go put that up for me, Aaron. Uh, joy not only enriches relationship, it is found only in relationship. And, and, and a corollary here, if you want enriched relationships, choose joy. If you want joy, choose relationship. Yesterday, uh, yesterday la- last week, pa- Pastor Nathan, he, he laid a wonderful framework. Uh, the foundation of everything is, is the love that we know in God. But, but also this idea that, that, that joy is, is a gift to us. It's called a fruit of the spirit, right? Uh, the, the, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and so forth, but love, joy, peace, right? That's, that's a gift God gives to us. Uh, so, so, so lots of times when, when we talk about, or, or be, we, we kind of say, well, I, I can't, I don't have that inside of me. Well, God gives it to us in Jesus. That's the whole point. And yes, he also says, he says in Philippians, rejoice the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Rejoice in Jesus. The Lord, uh, uh, the, the word Lord in the New Testament always points to Jesus, not to God, to Jesus, So rejoice in Jesus always. And so it's also a command. It's a choice that we make every day. Uh, You've all known people who you've seen them make that choice. I I always think about my father when I think about this. He he kind of um, was this golden boy. He he grew up and, and he was a child actor in Hollywood. Uh, he went uh, to school with, with all of the, um, the, the great movie stars of the time. Uh, uh, he, um, he was a star athlete. He, he, he got a scholarship to the University of Southern California. He's a running back. He had it all going for him. He knew everybody who was everybody in the town. And then World War II came, Pearl Harbor, and he joined the Army. Uh, got his legs shot up on Anzio. And after four years of the war, he, he came back and he couldn't run anymore like that. Couldn't go back to school because his nerves were shot. And when he looked for a job, even though he had a chest full of medals, they said, well, you can't do anything. And so all of a sudden, he was a nothing. Now, I want to, I want to tell you something. Dad never talked about this. I kind of pieced it together from... I was a good listener, right? And so his whole life, he supported his family by working in a factory. 
Every day I saw him choose joy. You see, that, that's the deal, right? We can choose something other than joy. Oh, me. Oh, my. We can choose to be angry. We can choose to be frustrated. We can, we can choose to let all these things in life affect us. Or we can choose joy. See, my dad always said, um, <laughs> the only reason I'm here is that God decided to let me live. Wow. Huh? And he chose the joy of relationship with those around him and with my mom and with us every day. And it's not, it's not just when you feel happy on the outside. We're talking on the inside. I had a professor at the seminary. He was also a clinical psychologist. Dr. Seleska was his name. And he told us of this woman, not by name, of course, but a patient of his. And she's a Christian, and she would go through these horrible clinical depressions. But he, he shared with us that after a time, she called those times her old friend because it drove her closer to Jesus. Now that's joy, isn't it? In fact, this, this joy that, that it's tied to relationships so closely, it's, it's part of the very fabric of what life is supposed to be. Back in Genesis, it says this. It says, let us make humankind in our image. This is God talking, right? And he says, we're going to make humankind in our image. Now, now wait a minute. It says our, I, the, here though Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, right? I mean, there's one God. What's going on here? He dwells as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? He dwells in this eternal relationship of love. We'll see in a few minutes, as the Father has loved me, right? He's loved me. And, and that, that's Jesus. Okay, I've loved you. And so it, this is the relationship of agape love that gives to one another. He says, we're going to make man in this image, humankind in this image. So how did he make him? What, what's the one way it says he made? Well, there's so much uh, <coughs> theological discussion, what this means. Well, he made him in, in righteousness and purity. And, and I think it's tied to relationship because the very next thing it says here is this. Go ahead. He made the male and female. This is what humankind is. It's not Adam and Eve. It's, it's humankind. The one, it's, it's about together as people and connected with God first. This is what humankind is. We were made for relationship. It's so interesting to me that, that no other created uh, uh, animal can really have relationship because they don't know they exist. We know we exist, and so we can know the other exists. You see, the joy, God created us to experience this joy of love in relationship. And of course, what sin does is isolates us. And instead of the world of brilliant color as we're tied to each other and to God in love we have a black and white world where we run away from God and from each other this woman that you gave me right go ahead I think the opposite of this is I think I, also, I call stoicism Kind of uh, being a stoic means you're kind of emotionless and accepting whatever is happening. And, and, and something else goes with this is life becomes a series of duties or jobs or just the next thing. Have you ever been there? Can I, can I share this with you? I got to fight this sometimes because I have all the theological answers, right? God works all things together for the good of those who love him. I got it, man. So just, so just shut it down, be emotionless, and say, whatever comes, God's going to do the right thing. And so life becomes a series of tasks, of duties. The very ne the next thing, one after the other. That's not living in 
in relationship. That's not living in joy. That's living disconnected. Yesterday, uh, I, I was here in the building, and, and I was doing some things for this morning, and, and uh, Ke- Kelly o- Oling was here. She had just gotten back from, from the bike ministry. And, and I, I, I met her in, in the warehouse, and we talked a few minutes, and she was so excited. She was so, so excited because they'd given away 36 bikes to the homeless folks. And then, and then uh, pa- pa- Pastor Bernahu, he took more bikes because they had a family that, that, that needed the bikes, a homeless family. And she was so excited, and they took showers and all these things. And she was so excited about these things that I thought, wow, that's joy. Because she's connected to the people. It wasn't just a task. And she was so excited about today, run Rockland. That's what she's doing today. She's got the whole wagon out. She's connecting with people, right? You see, you can do those things disconnected. Or you can say nothing ever really changes. How can that help anything? Live in this hopelessness. She was the opposite of stoicism yesterday. Why? Because she was doing something? No, because she was connected in relationship to God and to these folks in this thing called joy. Go ahead. Jesus, he, um, he didn't live this stoic life. I mean, think about this with me. When, when, when he kicked the money changers out of the temple, why was he doing that? And by the way, it says he was angry. Now, now, we can't get angry and not sin. God can. He was angry because in that outer court is the only place where the Gentiles could meet the living God. And they had made it into a den of thieves. He got upset when they wouldn't let the children come to him. He was compassionate with the sick. He hurt inside for the sick people. That's why he healed them. And finally, over everything, It says about Jesus, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. What was that joy? It was the joy of having relationship restored with you and with me and with all of humankind. Remember we said sin finally separates us? We can't find our way back. It takes Jesus to connect us to God again through the forgiveness of our sins. He didn't do this because it was a job to do. Kind of emotional stoicism, I got to do it. It was, he did it for the joy that he had in connecting with us. And what's so interesting to me is, just before this, the way this sentence begins is this way, let us set our eyes on Jesus. Let us set our eyes on him. This is where joy is found, in him, in relationship with him, in the love that he has for us. I, I don't know uh, where you're at in this, in this walk of faith. Uh, maybe this is all new stuff, or uh, maybe you don't think about it much, or, or, or maybe you're in a, a hard place and, and you're wondering about stuff. I, I don't know. But every time we talk about this, the Spirit of God touches your heart and says, the grace of God in Jesus, his love for you, his, the, the joy that he wants to experience, like, like the prodigal son coming home or the lost coin being found. He wants you to experience, to receive, to have. We all, every human being across the whole face of the earth knows that we're looking to be connected to something that, that without which we're empty. This is the one. And in this one, as he takes joy in us, he gives us this gift of joy to receive. Joy begins and flows from Jesus. And Jesus is always for you.
In the book of Romans, it, it says, therefore, having been justified by grace. And, and we read this, justified means it's a court made, made right before God by, by grace. And, and, and we look at, we, we define it, it's, it's undeserved love. But the, uh, um, but, but the idea of grace, it, it, it ties into this thing called agape love, which is always a love of relationship. I, I was playing through some old hymns a couple nights ago. It's from the old, old hymnal. Uh, uh, and, and it was amazing. This one was about, uh, uh, it, it had like a zillion verses, uh, maybe 12, right? And, and, um, and it, it, everything it looked at with, is with his grace, with his joy that Jesus has to have connection with us. And it looked at every aspect of life. And it says, because I know grace, his undeserved love, it's absolute and certain because it doesn't depend on me. Because I know that, I have peace in these places. I have joy in, in these places. Uh, and and, and the, the verses went from, from, from the idea of sin, right? And even the idea of sin where, where uh, 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 if, if, if you think that you, you've lost grace because, you had, because you've abused it and you've turned your back on it and you think it's past time and, you do, and, and, and at one time you could receive it but now you can't because you screwed up so much. No, you're misunderstanding grace. and the joy that Jesus would have to receive you. If your life has great troubles, where is Jesus there? How do you know he's there? Because of grace. Right? And it goes through every aspect of our lives. Therefore, having been justified by grace, undeserved love doesn't depend on us. We have peace with God. This peace is shalom peace. It's always tied to relationship. The, the, the shalom peace of, um, uh, of being right with God and through him with one another, always tied to right relationships. Uh, I, I remember when um, I, my first Hebrew class was in college and this, uh, this older gal taught it. She was like 40. And <laughs> And she, I'll never forget, think, I actually thought she was old, but, but uh, she was, had been an Orthodox Jew. And we went out one day and we, we sang Hebrew folk songs and danced. And, and it, the reason it sticks with me is the whole culture that's tied to the revealed God in the Old Testament, it was one of joy, of relationship restored. No matter what that people did, God was there, always to receive them back. This peace that we can live and enjoy, we can receive every day. Therefore, having been justified by grace, it doesn't depend on us. It depends on what Jesus did. We have this living reality of peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it goes on, it says this, through whom we have gained access by faith. And we look at faith as, as an inanimate object. We, we look at it like, like a, a crutch. It's not what faith is. Uh, there was a famous Christian, you might have heard his name. His name was Martin Luther, lived about 500 years ago. He defined faith as a living, busy, vital, active thing. A living, busy, vital, and we know that's true. Every living relationship is based on trust, is based on faith. Every single one. This is, so, so when it says you're gained access by faith, I, I have this living, busy, active vibrant trust in this Savior who has touched me by grace. And this is what we stand in every day. And it ends like this. And we rejoice. Isn't that amazing? It ends with joy. You think I make this stuff up, don't you? It ends with joy. And we rejoice in the hope, the certainty that we have in the glory of God. This is awesome stuff. Go ahead. In John 15, Jesus flushes this out. Uh, it starts with, I am the vine, you are the branches. I, I love that Marco chose a hymn that had that in it. I don't know if you caught it in the first hymn, but the idea of, of we are the branches, he's the vine. And, and it, this, was, this happened on Monday, Thursday. And so he was giving instructions to his disciples how to live out this love and joy and peace that they had in him. And, and he starts with love. That's where Pastor Nathan started last week. As the Father has loved me, so as, as have I loved you. Now, remain in my love. Now, remember, this love is agape love. It, it, it's not a stayed dead thing. 
It's a living love that's tied to love. Godly love can best be defined as, as seeing the need for the other, whatever it is, and no matter what it takes, fulfilling that need in this reality of living. So Jesus did, right? His love for us wasn't kind of stayed and dead and, and, and just, you got to jump through the hoop. No, he went to the cross. No, he healed the people who had compassion on them. No, he said, don't keep those kids from me. This is agape love lived out. It's about caring for the other. And, and, and our life, when we live in that joy, it's filled up. When we lose that, it's black and white. Now remain in my love, he says. And then he goes on, he says this. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his life. What is this, stoicism again? You mean, right, you, you, you're putting me under the thumb again? Life is just a bunch of rules I got to keep. Is that, what he, is that what he's talking about? First John, it, it says this. Same writer, by the way, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is his command. He tells us what his command is. To believe, well, what is faith? Oh, living, busy, vital, it's a living reality. Okay, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And this is resultative. And so, to love one another as he commanded. You see, it's about relationship. It's about something that's alive. How does this all end? I have told you this so that my, read the next word, joy may be in you. Why? Believe in, the, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, living, busy, vital, active thing, that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be complete. How? Love one another as I have loved you. And this is the night where Jesus washed their feet. You see, this joy... It is received in Jesus and then lived out in agape love towards those around us. And without that, our, our life is dull. It's black and white. With that, it, it's multicolor. It has pizzazz. It has meaning and purpose. Joy is not about getting about giving. When you lose your life, you find it. That's what Jesus said. And it is when we lose this agape, giving love that life becomes about duty and we lose our joy. Where, where is that you right now? Where can we turn away from that? and back to the joy that we know in Jesus. So here's the question, right? How, how do we grow in this joy? How do we grow in living it out in relationship? Uh, you know, Jesus told us, we, we just kind of we went so fast we missed it. He, remember he said this? Go ahead. He said, remain in my love. Because that's where the joy comes from, right? Remain, how, how do we do that? And, 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 you know, we, it's right in front of us sometimes, but it's good to ask the question because we say, well, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, you do. You go to the place. See, joy is a gift. So you go to the place where God is active in your life, where his spirit touches your life. You, you know this. The, the, in, the, the word of God, put the next one. The word of God is called the sword of the spirit. Yeah, you know, I, I, I was thinking about this this last week, and we look at these things as stayed and dead as well. We look at the words in the text as just words on paper instead of the living spirit of God touching our hearts in relationship, touching us with his love and joy. It's a, the, 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 the joy of God is a, is a gift, right? The fruit of the spirit. Where does his spirit work here? And, and then and, and in our baptism, I'll put that up there. Baptism is called the washing of renewal. Read the rest of it. Of the Holy Spirit. Remembering our baptism. You know, I, I was reading this last week. Uh, uh, Saul's conversion, you know, he's on the road, right? He gets knocked down by Jesus. He can't see afterwards. He's sitting there in Damascus and, and, and God sends this guy to him. And, and, and uh, th th this guy t says, hey, yeah, God, God is here for you. I've come to give you your sight and to give you the Holy Spirit. And you know what happens next? He puts his hands on him. The scales froth from his eyes. He can see there's giving him his sight 
and he baptizes him. There's giving him the spirit. We just don't think about this stuff. How do we remain in his love? And, and it's all about relationship. Right? The, the ecclesia through the word, the, the people of God. Baptism, bring us into the family of God. The father, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter. And of course, ongoing table blessing, the sacrament of God's real presence. We, we try to experience this more as family on Monday, Thursday, those of you who are there. This is where it begins and never leaves. But there's one more, and a famous Christian about 500 years ago, he really emphasized this. And, and it's called this, it's called the mutual consolation of the saints. Big words, right? Saints are those declared holy in Jesus. It's you and me. All those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who trust him. And, and, and we're together. We live out our lives a mutual consolation of the saints. It's, it's this seeking out relationship with one another and being built up in one another. It, it, we, we, we describe it here. Uh, you know, you always have to find uh, uh, short ways to describe things. So, so we describe this living together this way. We share life and create friendships and inspire hope. We do these things intentionally. We share life here. We share Jesus. We create friendships with, 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 with our small groups and with every group that comes together. We inspire hope. What they're doing when they run Rockland today, they're, they're inspiring hope. What they did with the bicycles is inspiring hope. We do it as a family, but we don't do it as to say, now we're done. Only, it's like an iceberg. A little bit of our life is lived together. Most of our life is lived outside of this place. We do it to help us know what it means to live in this joy outside of this place, to seek relationship, to live in this agape love, to live in the joy that we know in Jesus with, with those who are close to us. Where has your relationship with your wife or your husband or your children or your grandchildren, your neighbor becomes, where is it just a sense of duty? One job after the other instead of the joy of living in agape love. Where, where is that with your parents and with your grandparents or those you work with or the nation that you belong to? To live in this joy is powerful and it fills our lives with color. Romans 12, it says, don't think of yourselves more highly than you should. And the context is relationship. Where have we shut ourselves apart from others? Now, I was, um, I was thinking this through, and it really frightened me at this point in the message because, you know, you may be uh, an introvert, and you may be screaming inside, I can't do that! Or you may be going through compassion fatigue, you know? Or, or many other things, and, and now this becomes a heavy burden on your shoulders. I, I think it's important to remember that uh, when God created us, let us make humankind in our own image, it was on Friday. The next day was the Sabbath and God rested. We live our lives from this rest that we have in Jesus. That's why Jesus said, come to me who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Everything flows from the Sabbath, from rest, from grace. It's okay. Take a breath. 
how do you remain in Jesus and his love and receive the joy? You never leave that place of rest. And however God has made you, you live it out in relationship. There's a wonderful paraphrase from a text in Matthew 11 from the message. And, and I've used this before, but, but I, I want you to see it again. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? You see, when we approach it from stoicism, we get burned out. Oh my gosh, I have to create relationships now. Oh my, oh my I have to be a sermon. Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> Start from the rest you have in Jesus. Come to me, get away with me, and you'll receive your life. And, and it's Zoe, I think it's Zoe, this life we have with him, the life we were created to have. I'll show you how to take a real rest. But notice here, it's not just doing nothing. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. I have compassion for the sick. I love the children for the joy set before me. I do whatever it takes to live in relationship. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. God loves you unconditionally. What does that look like to give it away in your life? I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Just stay with me, remain in me, keep company with me. And you'll learn to live freely and lightly in this joy of grace that I give you to live in relationship. If you want enrich relationships, choose joy. <laughs> if you want joy, choose relationship. And the key is always the heart of Jesus for you. We want to live in a technicolor world, not the black and white stuff. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, uh, Lord, we, we're sinful people and we get it mixed up all the time. Even when we talk about joy, we, we, take, we tend to make it stuff we got to do instead of just receiving your grace and love into our lives and living us out. Give us your spirit in extra measure so that we can every day take a step to live in this joy that you would give us, to choose joy and relationship and to live in it, uh, not as a heavy burden, but as a free gift that you give us. Amen. We stand and we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together and pray for all God's people and their needs. Lord Jesus, the Savior of the world, we ask your blessing upon all the missionaries who have left home to share the gospel and that wonderful gift of joy that it brings us. Empower the word that they share so that hearts may be open and souls connected to you. Keep these faithful servants under your care and enable fruit to flow from their labor of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, our loving and compassionate God, we pray for healing for all those who are sick and injured. Have mercy upon them, bless their health, and fill them with peace and joy in the midst of their challenges. We especially lift up before you this morning, Charlene,
Freddie, Jeff, Kim, and Jeff, and for all others in need of your healing and deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, our friend, the one who is always with us, we ask that you be with those who have lost loved ones this past week and in the recent past. Just fill them with your presence, surround them with your love, fill them also with hope and joy. We especially lift up before you the family of George. We pray all this in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord Jesus, our risen Lord and King of all kings, it troubles us so much to hear about the violence and the sins of the fallen world around us. There's been an increase now of wars and rumors of wars. Lord, as your second coming approaches, we pray for peace. Especially we lift up the situation in the Middle East between Israel and the Arab nations around them. Lord, bring peace to that situation. We pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, hearts may be turned from selfishness and concern and hatred to caring for others, from pleasure to caring, from violence to loving. We are waiting, Lord. Please come quickly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow upon us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not die but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemn the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation, and that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Come, all is now ready. Thanks, thanks be to God. We join...
gotten the blood of our Lord and Savior keep you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace and go in his joy. Amen. Please rise. Please be seated. Offering I get to do today. So this is uh, the Run Rockland shirt. I get one of these every year, even though I don't run. They're very kind to me, right? And so we got a bunch of folks out in the community uh, sharing the, the joy of Jesus as they run with a whole lot of folks. Uh, and of course, I talked with Kelly yesterday. I, I mentioned that, um, giving away bikes uh, with, with the ministry to the homeless downtown. You know, it, there's a, uh, I, I, my, my kids say I got to quit talking about it. But in, in The Lord of the Rings, there's this great um, scene where uh, a couple of hobbits, Mary and Pippin, are trying to get the Ents to go to war, you know, get, against the bad guys. And they say, well, you're part of this world, aren't you? You're part of this world. We take that serious. God put us here. We're part of this world. Um, we do stuff like being out in the community and do good stuff and bring people together so we can create friendships, have the opportunity to speak Jesus to them. We, we look at the homeless folks as an opportunity to connect in relationship and the love of Jesus. We, it's what we do. And our offerings are, are a big part of that. God calls us to be part of this world uh, like Jesus was. He stepped into our world. We call that the incarnation. Uh, and so now we are his presence in this world. And his spirit empowers us to be generous uh, with our time, with our money, with our effort. Uh, and so as God's spirit guides you, whether, whether it's here in, in this part of his kingdom or another place where God's at work, uh, I, I pray that uh, you'll let his spirit lead you uh, into the joy uh, of knowing that you're part of this world and you're here for a purpose. Uh, here at St. Matthew, there's a number of, number of places you could give. Uh, you can do it in person with the boxes we have on the walls. Uh, you can give online. Uh, you, can, you can text it or you can do it by mail, by snail mail. Uh, but again, uh, if not here, uh, see where, what God is laying before you where you're empowered by his spirit to be generous. He says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we praise your name that you came into our world for us. And now you give us the privilege to um, be your presence in this world. Lord, you were so generous. You gave up your very blood for us, your very life. We pray that you might give us joy as we do this for the other. Um, out of the love that we know in you, the agape love, and the joy of connecting with people to your love. Pray in your name. Amen. Uh, announcements today. Uh, we just have three of them. The first one is, is uh, Love Rockland. That's coming up. That's on May 18th. Um, uh, if we... Uh, 
Connect with us if, if you know of a project, if there's a pro- or if you're just wondering if maybe this could be a project. My neighbor down the street, she's not able or he's not able to get out and, and do that yard or paint that wall or whatever it might be, uh, uh, that, that can be a project. So again, a lot, there's lots of ways to, um, to connect here. I, I know that, uh, that the choir is going to um, uh, take their voices into places uh, that, that, have, that are in darkness, shadows, and, and, and just lighten it up with, the, with the, their voices that sing about Jesus. There's, there's lots of ways to, to, be a, to, be, or to be a part of this. Uh, um, so if you have a, an idea, a, a place where we can go and where we can touch people with the love of Jesus, let us know. If you want to be a part of it too, uh, again, just, just let us know. We'd, we'd, love, uh, we'd love to have you join us. That's May 18th. Foundations uh, begins April 28th. That's Foundations 1. That's the, the one with me. I talk about uh, just who we are, who I am, uh, uh, our, our history together, what God, what, how we believe God is, is leading us. Uh, I always have a lot of uh, fun with this. I think it's a, uh, I get excited about it. It renews me uh, in, in what we're about, um, and, and I'd love to have you join us. So that's on uh, April 28th, and then uh, the three sessions that, that follow uh, Pastor Nathan, they, he does a wonderful job with Finally, uh, Vacation Bible School is coming. It's going to be here before we know it, June 17th to 21st. Uh, you can, you can uh, register. Uh, you can let us know that you'd love to be part of it. It's really kind of an all-hands-on-deck thing. And, and I've always felt that, that uh, we, we touch kids and, 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 the, and their parents and their families and show them the love of Jesus, uh, have a dinner before we start. We feed them and so forth, light dinner. Um, but one of the greatest things, too, is that we come together. Uh, and we do this together. So, um, yeah, be, be a part of it as God leads you. It's coming up June 17th to 21st. Let's certainly let the kids on your block know about it. Uh, we'd love to have them here. So, now uh, the blessing. May you know the heart of the Father that, um, that in your baptism calls you his dear son or his dear daughter. <laughs> May you know the joy of Jesus and his love for you who were the joy set before him relationship with you went the way of the cross. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, may you every day receive the gift of joy into your life um, and connect with others in relationship to share that joy. Amen. We stand as we uh, praise our God, sent forth by God's blessing. Great to be with you today uh, in person, online. May you know the love of Jesus. May his joy go with you. And may you, um, may you share that joy in relationship with others. Amen.